be good. How are you? I'm just going to set the recording going so that we can capture the conversation. So, the closing event, you're the only people here at the minute. We had a digital dinner last night and quite a few people came to digital dinner. So maybe they're not coming to both because we kind of chatted about some of the same stuff. So I don't know. It might be a, an intimate gathering this evening. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I feel like that's I missed okay. everything else because I was in the midst of traveling and everything that um, I had to be here tonight. <laughs> Where have you been traveling, Adina? I um, actually had an exhibition in Italy, in Sorrento. So um, we traveled from Bosnia to Italy. We drove for like 30 hours. <laughs> um, it was beautiful. And then right now I'm on the coast of Croatia, on the Adriatic coast of Croatia with some friends and a um, glass of wine. <laughs> Very nice. Croatia is beautiful. It is. Yes. So we've been on the road a lot. I feel like um, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this Corona thing is starting to die down and we're starting to get back to some kind of sense of normalcy. Um, I don't know what the situation like is in Spain right now, but um, we're traveling again, so that's good. <laughs> um, in the mainland, the cases are increasing in Spain um, and also in the UK. Um, but here in Lanzarote, we're relatively safe, touch wood. At the minute, we have very few cases and there's not been a big uptick yet um, due to the start of the summer holidays, which some of the other islands have felt. So Tenerife, for example, is in level four, which is our top tier before a total lockdown. Um, whereas we're in level one, which is like pretty much nothing. Like that's the you, there's nothing lower than that at the minute, <laughs> so we're very lucky. We feel very safe. Um, but I'm actually about to do some traveling myself to countries which will no doubt a totally different kind of landscape. So yes, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling a bit anxious about it actually about traveling. Were you anxious to go, Adina? Um, I, when I was in Italy, they still have pretty serious restrictions on wearing masks and things and pretty uh, serious restrictions. Of, um, but um, yeah, in Croatia and in Bosnia, everybody's pretending like there's no Corona. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a good strategy. <laughs> Definitely a good strategy if you're traveling there because it makes it a lot easier to travel, I guess. As long as if people aren't too um getting too sick, then it's okay. How about you, Kay? How are you? No, we're good. We still have quite a few restrictions. Um we're still wearing masks and being very careful. And um we've been to the UK recently, which has opened up a little bit, and travel has opened up as well um, but they're being quite strict that people are vaccinated coming into the country and that everybody wears masks so a little bit looser though uh, we're back where we can go inside into restaurants and bars this week so that's huge that's big yeah yeah so have you got tourism back yet in Lanzarote we do but not from the UK which is kind of the, the biggest source I mean we're getting a lot of French and German and Italian and mainland Spanish tourists, which is good because okay. it means some things are opening up again. But um, there's still a lot of people on ETA, which is like um, the Spanish version of furlough, I guess. And there's still lots of hotels not open, lots of restaurants not open. It's And lots of businesses have closed because there's just been nothing, you know, for such a long time. Um, but really, this month is the first month that I've noticed, like some of the beach car parks, you know, at some at some point, you can go wherever, you know, and now you're like, oh, we actually have to drive around to find a space. Like, what? Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's in the going in the right direction, I think. Good. That's good. It yeah. is good. It is good. We usually visit in January when it's quiet. We usually go to Lanzarote because oh. um, it, it's nice and quiet, but the weather is still fine. Yeah. So that's kind of our time for going there. Yeah. Are you hoping to come in January? We go most years in January. 
Okay. So we got there last year. We missed this year. That's our first time in a long time. Yeah. Ah, so no, we're looking forward to getting out when you come on. Yes, definitely. But we're looking forward now to getting back to going again and being able to travel. So we're looking forward to that. It'd be lovely. Yeah. 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 It's funny because yesterday a lot of the artists at the digital dinner were saying the same thing. Like the thing that they've really missed is travel. Um, and it, yes. it seems really common amongst artists, this kind of like, it's almost like a need, you know, to kind of get about and see other countries and different experiences. I think it's quite a common yeah. thing. Yeah. So you've been very busy for the last month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. No rest for the wicked. No rest for the wicked. It must have been very bad somewhere along the line. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not even just been the last month. It's been what, the last. The build up to it as well. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. the last month has been quieter than like June. May and June were really, really hectic. June in particular, because I had some commission work in the UK that I had to go back for. And so it made it really, really, um, the time was really, really tight. Yeah, in June, it was really stressful. So after that, this month has felt quite nice, actually, <laughs> but it has still yeah. been pretty busy. You yeah. know, we've had events most days. We've been down at the physical exhibition on a Saturday, um, invigilating there. And obviously emailing, promoting, doing the interview yeah. to us, doing the participation projects. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going up, you know. But um, yeah. it's fun. It's fun, right? I know. So, but you can take your foot off the pedal now and relax a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, a little. A um, little bit. We've got the catalogue. Yeah, we've got yeah. the catalogue to, to get finished off and published. Mm -hmm. Um and then we need to go around and go around the island and try and find spaces for next year's festival because they, okay. they get booked up. Yeah, they get booked up about quick. a year in advance. So we try as soon as one festival is finished, we try and book the space for the next year. Um, and we've got. Well, you do loads of different venues. Is it different areas around the island? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's when, lovely. Yeah, in 2019 we had our Fe. La Santa, um, um, San Bartolome, uh, Teguise, trying to think of all the places, it just feels so long ago. Um, yeah. I can't remember where else, but yeah, lots of different spots so that different, you know, you can have more people see it and it's easier for people to get to at least something, yes. particularly the locals, not everyone's got a car. And so it's um, nice if there's like something happening within walking distance. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So we look forward to next year's. <laughs> I'm coming next year, by the way. I cannot not go to Canary Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, but what do you think is the biggest difference? I mean, aside from the obvious in, in doing a physical festival and doing a digital festival, are there any advantages to this digital? I ask you because I also do besides my, you know, doing the uh, artwork, I also organize events sometimes. And I see that um, there's a difference between, obviously between physical and digital events, but sometimes there's some advantages to the digital um, online events that we didn't have before. And um, how do you think, I mean, what, what are the major differences for you at this point now that it's all kind of ended? For me, it's the workload. The workload to do a digital festival is so much greater than doing it virtually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of. No, no, more than physically. You mean? Which one? Say? Which one's Vir harder? Virtually is harder. Yeah. Yeah. You virtually said virtually is hard. harder than virtual. Did I? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the virtual one is is so much harder. Yeah. Just trying to get all the artworks together, get all the information together, um, then like kind of getting it uploaded. And we, we have quite bad, I mean, it's good for, for where we are on the island, but we have quite bad internet connection. Um, mm, the best that we can have for where we live, but <laughs> it's hideously slow. So to do like an upload of, say, one of the recorded events, it takes a full 24 hours. 
and that takes out our internet for 24 hours. So if we have events back to back, like two days running, then we don't have time to upload one video before the next one. So then you have like a backlog, a backlog of uploads. But also getting the getting the, the images and the videos uploaded ready for the launch date. Because you don't want to put the open call out kind of too far in advance. You know, so yeah. by the time you get all the artwork in and then you start curating it and deciding which pieces go with which, then it's kind of a... That's the thing that's different for me. to get it all uploaded. And... Yeah. The thing that I think I find the most difficult about it being digital is the curation. Curating digitally is, oh, it's so hard. It really hurts my head because it's, it's so difficult to have the pieces side by side to, to kind of see how they kind of work together, you know? So building a narrative in a digital space is really, really difficult. And um, it, I kind of feel a bit restricted. And this year I found it easier because I'd had, it's like my second kind of big digital thing, but it's a really noticeable difference for me. The process of curation is, is hard. Whereas when we're doing it physically, that's my favorite part. I love curating, but yeah, digitally yeah. it's But also hard. do doing the festival physically, um, the excitement of the artwork arriving is like, that's yeah. just, there's such a buzz. I mean, the first year we did it, we had, how many pieces of art did we have? So many, Two, 200, 200 and something. something, yeah. And just like, so every day, the like the post lady's turning up with like a big stack of things and she's like, <laughs> You know, she's coming up all excited and she was as excited as us. Yeah. What's this? What's this? <laughs> yeah. And there's 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 such a such a difference seeing a, a photograph of an artwork and unwrapping it and seeing it in front of you is no comparison. Yeah. But you see, that's that's the thing we all kind of individual arts have to really talk about. I'm also work with um um, uh, World Citizen Artists um, Organization, it's in London, um, and they work with musicians and with visual artists, and it seems like Corona has been easier for musicians because they get together, they play some music, and they put it online, and it's fine, yeah. but I feel like we still lack the really uh, um, proper way of presenting visual art digitally because, you know, virtual shows, I mean, is there a format that we can come up with that will present visual art in a better way. Because I feel like, you know, there's certain things that this pandemic will leave us with and online things I feel like will stay to some extent. Yeah. You know, the hybrid things will happen more and more, but um, I think we still in the visual arts haven't found um, the right way or, or an optimal way of presenting visual art because yeah. there's there's so much about it that's that's tactile you know there's so much about it that is about seeing a piece of artwork in person so you know and i use new technologies and ar and all this but it's this the digital stuff i feel like everything hi aya <laughs> hi aya hi aya hi what do you need please <laughs> Did many artists go over with their work themselves? Did many of them travel over and take work over? Yeah, the first yeah. year they did. We had artists from all over, from Canada and Iceland and the UK, yeah. Germany, Spain. Um, I can't, again, it's a long time ago, but yeah, from all over yeah. people came um, and stayed for the first week of the festival or the first two weeks of the festival. And so we had quite a kind of packed couple of weeks um, when mm -hmm. all the artists were there. And it had quite a nice vibe. A lot of them stayed in the same place and they shared cars together and went to see things together. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah, it kind of really developed a sense of community, which is missing. Yeah. So that's kind of, it's, you try and cultivate it through events like this, but it's actually really yes. difficult. And in a way, I'm kind of always happier 
at the events that we do online when there's less people because as soon as there's lots of people it actually becomes almost impossible without breaking out into smaller groups to to do anything kind of meaningful you know yeah, um, yeah. It, it's really difficult whereas but it works very well it worked very well yeah 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 it did it was good yeah it was a great experience i think as well the there's, there's definitely a, excuse me. <laughs> I have one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, last year we did the festival completely virtually. And this year we had a, a small exhibition in, in um, Yaitla, a small village. Very last in, minute. In the centre of the island. Um, so as much as we want to get back to a, a physical approach to the festivals, there's, there's definitely a need for virtual, for virtual stuff. Because some of the events that we've had this year, like obviously, you know, artists, artists can't all travel, artists can't all make it to the festival yes. at the same time. Um, and some of the collaborations have been absolutely awesome. And people have people have built up really strong friendships like through the festival, but kind of separate through Online. individual yeah. events. And this year that has happened more. Last year, that didn't really happen. And last year was kind of our first go at doing things virtually. And we kind of, and that was one of the things we wanted to work on. And this year that's happened more, a yeah. lot more, which is, which is good. So it's kind of taking all of the good bits and, and pushing them forward. And as for displaying the virtual arts online, Adina, like, I totally agree. And I have no idea how to fix it. I really don't, because it's that sense of, there's something about being in front of a piece of, of work that feeds an emotional response in the body that when there's yes. a screen there, it just, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> it's not the same. Mm -hmm. no. And I don't know how to I, get yeah. over that or get around it. I don't think there is a way to get around it. I don't think, like, no matter how much money you throw at, at technology in that kind of sense, just there's, I don't think there's any way to get around that because seeing the actual piece, seeing the scale of the piece in front of you, seeing the texture, you know, there's. Mm. You know, there, there is, I mean, I think VR is going to be helpful in that, but especially because VR is turning into devices that are, you know, self-sustainable and you don't know, you no longer need a really powerful desktop and yeah. sensors and a guy who knows how to turn on the desktop and turn on the sensors. <laughs> um, um, so I've now, everything I do, everything I design and all the installations I design, I design them in VR. Um, and there is, I feel like that technology might go into the direction where you will be able to go to an exhibition in VR and see those things in person because it's hyper realism. It's not even realistic, it's hyper real. Yeah. Um, and you do get a sense, I mean, the VR messes with your brain in a way that you feel like you're flying, even though you know that your feet are on the ground, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So it does have the ability to, but that will mean a whole new step. You know, it's kind of with the kind of like with the electric cars. You know, we all need to have it, and we all need to know how to use the technology, and um, we all need to be able to to approach it and stuff like that. Yeah. So I feel like that's going to be a new level. But I think you're right at what you said. You know, I um, see a lot of these conferences and a lot of talks and I've done them a lot of online. And last year, I, I actually never stopped working in Corona. I've actually worked even more because now I can be in the United States and in Slovenia and in Indo Indonesia all in one day. I mean, before yeah. I would cancel one of those things um, and I would have to take four days if I want to give a 20 minute speech in Prague. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, my, my eye opener was because I, I also teach visual intelligence to MBAs in Slovenia. And the dean said to me, you really need to be at this conference in the States. And I said, but oh, my God, that's the same day I'm teaching at your school. She goes, well, you do have a lunch break, don't you? 
That's brilliant. <laughs> so I was like teaching in Slovenia in the af early afternoon for my lunch break. I gave a speech in in United States and then I went back to Slovenia. But um, so that does have its advantages, but it's yeah. just not the same. Um, but at the same time, I feel like the digital cannot go without the physical and the physical will also no longer to be able to go without the digital, you yeah. know? Yeah. I feel like one will have to coincide with the other. But what I found is, and this is an experience I would like to share with you. I um, uh, give speeches at a conference in, in Prague for now three or four years. Um, and they have in the virtual, con in the online conferences really made a whole new level because they give, um, they make all the speakers do like a go through a training so all the speakers have to get together on Zoom and they have a woman who is a specialist in online um, speeches or presentations or whatever. So she takes us through and they actually, in 2020, she just gave us kind of inputs. And then in 2021, she gave us a whole like guide of how to do it online. Like, and she went like, you have a 20 minute keynote and the first five minutes you do this and the next five minutes you do this and the next five minutes you do that. So they, for their conference, they really formatted very specifically each speaker, you know, because before when you have speakers, it's always a question, can, how are they with, with public appearances, you know, and how are they with public speeches and how they're with, with, uh, with the stage and with the mic and all of this, yeah. Yeah. but now it's a whole new thing. How are they with the screen and how are they with trying to get, you know, people animated? Cause you're right. You do have a problem when there's too many people on zoom. It's just chaos. So they ended up, and this is a wonderful thing they did. They do this. They make this practice. that's mandatory. When you're done speaking, you have to give the word to the next person and you have to say like, for instance, okay, and now, hey, what do you think? So you cannot finish speaking without calling out the next person. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no more like, hey, what does everybody think about this? And then nobody says anything. Yeah, you know? or everybody answers <laughs> Or everyone, at the same yeah, time. yeah, everyone talks at once and you're like, oh. <laughs> So they make this, and uh, you know, I, I've stolen this idea, used it, and they make this thing, wh which is wonderful. Like, what you cannot finish speaking until you give the word to the next person, and it can be anybody, you know. And then the next person will keep speaking, and then it will turn, give, give kind of the torch to the next person, yeah. and it works really well. Everybody gets involved, you know. That's a good tip. I've written it down. Okay. <laughs> I've written it but down. I feel like we're all in the, you know, we're all in the same pot, you know, yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. all in the same problem. So I feel like, you know, sharing these experiences and trying to figure out and learning from each other and how, trying to figure out whatever worked well for you, you know, to kind yeah, of, yeah. that knowledge is the only way we're going to move forward, you know. Yeah. It was really interesting seeing um, in the, the exhibition that we had the physical exhibition this year it was it was interesting seeing people um and how they re reacted and interacted with the two virtual pieces that we had um yours was kind of as you entered into the gallery um and that that was really good wasn't it that yeah well we had for for yours because there's quite a lot of content so we had a tripod set up with a device and we had it running so that people could see and we could say, so download this app. When you've downloaded it, click on the birds, do this, do that, so that people could really engage with it. Because otherwise I felt like it would probably be a bit superficial and people would just be like, oh, it kind of looks like this. Great. And they wouldn't really know, you know, so um, so that worked really well. The other VRPs didn't work as well because it was difficult. It didn't download on everybody's phone. Some things worked, some things didn't. Um, and people- Can I just tell you one funny thing you're gonna laugh at? That app, I cannot download on my phone. Like the programmer <laughs> sent it to me. And when she sent it to me, my phone decided it's gonna update itself. So it just updated or my pocket updated it or something. And it will not play any AR. No! So I have sent you an app 
that I have no idea if it works or not. <laughs> I mean, the program, it works really well. It works really well. well. Going at the, the woman who programmed it, she was like, it works, it works. I'm like, it doesn't work on my, it's a Samsung Galaxy. And she's like, did you update it by any chance? I'm like, no, it updated itself. Oh, <laughs> funny. <laughs> But, Did you um, have experience of things online, Kay, throughout the pandemic? What's your experience been? Um, we've had a couple of online exhibitions. Um, there was a good one in Bar and the Loon Gallery in Athlone. So I was involved with both of them. Um, the Bar Festival happens every year. So a bit like you, they're holding part visual and doing it online as well. Um, I think the visual kind of puts more of an atmosphere into the town and um, they do you know, small shop windows and um, so they have paintings right through the town and then they also have say one big gallery um, but they, they kind of find they connect with people coming into the town is more when it's there in front of them to see. Do you know, so they've gone back to festival this year. They've just, because we've opened up, it's this. It's actually this week um, that they've, they've gone back to having the town and trying to get people to come back into the town. Yeah. So, That's yeah, really I think the physical and the seeing of the painting is, it's still important. Yeah. Yeah. I think that getting people back into city centres is something that a lot of city centres are really worried about, actually. I don't know if they need to be worried. I don't really, I've not experienced um, a UK city centre in a while, but um, definitely here in Spain, it's something they're concerned about. And definitely it's something that the councils are talking about in the UK. Um, they're like, there's lots of meetings happening around holding cultural events specifically in city centres. To, to draw people back in and to kind of get people used to socializing in that way again. Um, I think yes. it's something that even this time next year, we'll probably have to consider that maybe there might still be anxiety. You know, we have no idea how long it's going to go on for and how long people are still going to be affected by the pandemic and therefore what people will be bringing with them next year. So... Well, do there's a whole issue. I'm, I'm doing an installation in Zagreb for that they have a festival of light and it's an outdoor event all throughout the city. And all the organizers have a problem because um, they can have a COVID free event, but they have to check the, the vaccinations and stuff, the certificates, yeah. but they also have to check IDs. But legally, nobody can check people's IDs but the police. So they're going through all these like legal issues. The governments also have problems on how like to regulate things and to make like these events where you're supposed to check people's, you know, COVID passes, but at the same time you have to check their IDs to know that that's their COVID pass. Yeah. But they are not allowed to check IDs because that's only for, <laughs> so it's like this big, I mean, yeah, we're like, everybody's in the same mess and governments as well. They don't really know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. how to come out with all this all these um all these regulations and how to really make it make it safe and make it okay but you know there's so many there's i just feel like we need to come out of this experience with some lessons learned and maybe try to implement them even if tomorrow everything is fine you know and and try to um you know figure out a way to kind of be able to um you know, kind of transfer this knowledge that we have acquired in this last year and a half. Yeah. Um, but I think in the art world as well, this digitalization was bound to happen. And just now that we're kind of forced into it. <laughs> yeah, it's just been accelerated, hasn't it? That's all. It was coming. It's been coming for a long time. Yeah. yeah. So how have you both um, found the festivals? Well, it's my first time, so I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was great. Um, like the connect, I like there was no pressure on people to join things, you know, because it's summertime. So people are traveling and you're going to different things and you've got work on and you've got different things to deal with. So it was lovely that you could tap into things that suited you and when you had time. I would have liked to go to a lot more of the events 
Um, but I think mainly because of the time, summer, and I, maybe just because we were let back out again, we just all wanted to take off and go. <laughs> yeah. um, do you know, so we weren't sort of tied down at home as much, but I thought it was wonderful that you could, that you had the freedom and no pressure on you to connect with the different events that were on, which were really good. There were some really good events on. Yeah. Do you so think I liked you that. Was heard it if the, the whole festivals were at a different time? Do you think it's problematic that they're in summer? No, no. I think a lot of the, the um, well, it would be great if it was January for me. <laughs> so if you could just shift it maybe to January time, that would be lovely. But, um, no, I think a lot of art festivals and a lot of art, especially in Ireland, a lot of art events happen around this time of year. Yeah. Um, I think probably the fact that you weren't going there um, and I think because of lockdown, we came out of lockdown really for the month that this was open. We just like we just took off every weekend. We took anywhere we could go. We just got in the car and went. <laughs> um, you know, so you weren't you weren't inclined to be. And then our weather was fine. Our weather is usually very bad, um, but the weather was fabulous. So you're kind of not inclined to stay in and go online as much. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder I if there's really a bit of... Sorry, Sorry, Nina, go ahead. I was really Im impressed with the amount of events or, or how you really approach this concept in like a, a really cohesive way. And I thought that was really interesting, even though I wasn't able to participate in a lot of them, because when you're traveling, for me, there's also a problem with the internet connection and all this. I'm always dependent on, you know, how the internet is working at the place where I'm staying. But... Um, but I was really impressed with the amount of events and the amount of different ways you were trying to connect people. I would really like to encourage you because I'm a workaholic and <laughs> but I would um, really encourage you to try to um, maybe do similar smaller things throughout the year and maybe keep this connection going and maybe do like because I've seen this with other organizations where they do like you know, a Zoom meeting every other month or something. And it's completely, you know, sometimes there's seven of us, sometimes there's 30 of us, but there's, it feels like there's a continuation of, of the connection and it kind of keeps going. Um, and maybe you can think about, you know, finding a way, I know it's more work for you, <laughs> but um, maybe um, try to keep, the festival happening or some something happening throughout the year you know yeah. um what i also found really interesting is um in doing certain events is um this way of having artists or people who participate this year recommend people for next year and do some kind of an event for because that's how the connections grow further it's like this tree that you know starts growing where not just through an open call, but also through recommendation from artists who've been there, you know, one year to recommend artists for next year. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how the networking kind of spreads because if I'm involved in something I really think is amazing, I also want to try to get people I know involved and, um, you know, it's, it's a good way of, you know, expanding the network in a way. So I don't know if that's something you want to do, but... Um, it's um, um, definitely an, an interesting way of, of keeping things, you know, happening. Yeah. Um, the first year, that was when we finished the festival, that was exactly what we said, wasn't it? We were like, oh, we need to make a plan to do kind of smaller events. Yeah. And we started planning it, and then we were going to do something around Easter before the next one as like a kind of introduction to the next one we thought if that goes well then the next year we'll do you know more but then obviously covid so that didn't happen because covid came before and then we thought initially we thought we we're going to have to cancel the festivals totally because we couldn't find any online platforms that we could afford to host the amount of people that had applied for the festivals and it was really really close to the time wasn't it, it was like a couple of months before um, the festivals were due to launch. We found Art Steps, 
um, through a gallery that I'm working with in the UK. And they said, oh, it's free. We're putting out all of our collection on it. Why don't you try that? And then the online thing happened. So that's something that we've had in mind and it's just never quite happened. Um, but yeah, we're not, we're not afraid of the work so much. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I like the idea of artists, <laughs> artists as well. That's kind of cool because it's quite difficult. It's not difficult promoting. It's difficult connecting with the people who this event would suit. You know, it's not like it's not a commercial festival. It's not about selling. It's not about prestige. It's not about it's about making art and connecting with other artists that want to make art, you know, and maybe doing things together in the future and kind of enjoying the life of an artist do you know what I mean it's kind of about celebrating that um and so if you had artists recommending artists then that would really work because like you say they've already experienced it they know what it's about and so they will and they know who who in their network would fit the the event you know yeah. exactly yeah I really like that I really like that as a suggestion yeah H have you got any suggestions Kay <laughs> I'm just Love. wondering. <laughs> I'm just wondering: is it is it harder for you to um, cope with the you know with expansion with way more people joining? Um, we're going to get to a point <laughs> where it's going to be difficult, and we're going to need more than just two people, you know, because at the minute it's it's tough, but it's manageable. Um, but each year we've had about 100 extra artists. So we went 152, 53, 50. So at some point, we're going to either need a bigger team or we're going to need a different... You're going to have to start limiting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're, choosing, you're going to have to start choosing or narrowing down what work you pick for it. Like most, most um, art festivals would be... You know, they choose what they want to go into it so that they can limit numbers of artists if it's in a gallery say but I'm just wondering like does it get too big for you that you you can't cope with the workload yeah 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 we definitely have to manage it so that it doesn't because then we deliver a, we would end up delivering a subpar event and we wouldn't want to be doing that you know mm. so we have to bear that in mind um I'm kind of against selection of artists um just because it makes it immediately takes a festival from being democratic to putting a hierarchy in place you know and really yeah. we are not anybody to say you know what's kind of okay art and what's not we just want to show people's art and to get people together and to kind of have a community of artists that you know we're all but we're all the same yes. we're all equal yeah. So this is why we don't choose artworks. As long as if people send stuff that meets the theme, then it's, you know, everybody's welcome. Um, yes. But yeah, at some point we might have to say, you know, the first X amount. I don't know, I don't, but yeah, it's something that we're gonna have to think about. Yeah. 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 It, is, it is hard with, like Sarah said, with, it, with there only being the two of us, um, it is a huge amount of work. Mm. Um, and th this year's not been too bad because I've not had any work other than the festival because I work for a, for a British airline that currently aren't flying out here. So, <laughs> so I've, I've had no work other than the festival, so I've been able to focus solely on the festival full time. Mm -hmm. But it is going to get... Yeah. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah, if next year you're back at work and I have the amount of work that I have this year, we'll definitely need recruits, you know, volunteers. Yeah. Feel free to shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're probably going to have to get into fundraising more too. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that we, we talked about last night. It's fundraising for us is kind of, it's really tough because there's there's like different ways like we had we had a real debate about even launching the t-shirts this year i was okay. against, i was against the t-shirts this is like so i'm i'm i have real issues with people treating art as a commodity and 
people making money out of artists and then having these kind of lives of privilege whilst the artists are kind of really struggling and have no voice and I get really really upset yeah. about about money being attached to anything and so which, is, which is why we do the which is why the way we yes do. but quite a few artists every year have said that they'd like merchandise and Simon was involved in a festival there's a beach art festival in Texas um, a couple of months before a couple of months before we launched the open call for this um, and a lot of their artists they, they had t-shirts and loads of the artists had t-shirts yeah. um, and they were the same, they were, it was the same kind of thing I, I spoke to the organizers and they said well you know we don't want to be commercial but we have to get funding in somehow to pay for for the stuff that we do and and this year kind of the the money that we've received has has gone on like data storage and you know just just yeah. being able to have the extra space on on the gallery steps um like yeah 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 just just holding all the <laughs> holding Such a all large the videos amount of data and insane. All, the, all the pieces of work is yeah well but, but we, again we, we got good feedback we got good feedback yes. so um and this was again it wasn't, it wasn't forced on anybody it was a personal choice whether you bought you know which is nice as well if you could afford it you bought it if you didn't there was no pressure on somebody so i don't see anything wrong with pushing you know yeah it's just that way it like it wasn't pushy it was it was up to the person themselves yeah I, and I get that. I just also mm -hmm. know that there are people who wouldn't be able to afford a T-shirt, you know, and they might, for example, they might save up and save up and save up and come next year. And then every other artist that's in Lanzarote has a T-shirt and they don't, you know. I mean, I would just give them one. But it's that kind of, it just... Just have stickers. <laughs> <laughs> that they can put in their t-shirt if they don't have one yeah. yeah but this is the kind of thing that you know it's great to talk about and hear what other people think about it and yeah yeah what do no, you I thought it was good. The, com the commercial side of it adina what do you think about the merch and can i just say hello to ah, kathleen ah, ah. and matt oh yeah hello sorry because you don't have videos on i hadn't i hadn't seen you arrive hello Catalina. hello matt um, I have to tell you, I'm very American in that sense. <laughs> um, I uh, spent most of my life in the United States, and now I'm in Europe, especially because of this project. But um, I got educated in the United States, and I got uh, totally developed my, my uh, career in the United States in a country that doesn't have a ministry of culture, where there's, the state does not subsidize art, where art is, you're on the market, and that's it. If you can yeah. sell, you can be an artist. If you can't sell, forget about it. <laughs> so um, I I um, I understand what you're talking about, where you know artists are being taken advantage of, and you see these calls with like these crazy fees, and yeah. you see really how much artists are investing in their. Um, Career and they're not getting things back for that, you know, for for the investment and things like that. But at the same time, I think that um, there's a very distinct uh, model business uh, model of art in the United States and Europe. In the United States, it's a very closed um, scene. Um, I always say we're in a universe of our own and we spin in it. And honestly, when I was in New York, I did not care about the public. I cared about my curators, my collectors, and my critics. And that's it. Um, but when I came back to Europe, I ended up coming back to Bosnia because I fell in love with, but you know. Um, and I realized that culture here and visual art here has a lot more impact that at the art openings, you can find um, people who are decision makers 
And when the state does get involved in funding, we can see art and visual art and culture on the news, and you can see it in the regular papers. I mean, if you open New York Times arts and leisure section, you will find very little about visual art unless some artist died. Um, you'll find HBO and, and that's really a problem. And, and artists have become, you know, really marginalized in their own world. But um, I also think that um, you should not be poor as an artist and you yeah. should have a uh, decent living. And I'm very proud that I make a decent living on my work. Um, and I don't think you should not fundraise. I think you should fundraise because I think your work is worth something <laughs> yeah. and it's worth a lot. And that needs to be paid by, you know, somebody. I've worked this project. I get finance from tourist boards to cities, to embassies, to you know, different, different sources, um, even commercial sports so sources, even, um, you know, companies. Um, I think it's, I think art has a value and the power of communicating across the board, across cultures. And your festival brings great attention to places like Lanzaro, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like places you can't, even pronounced a lot of times. It brings attention to it and you have made it globally known. And I think somebody should pay for that. And as a matter of fact, there are organizations and institutions whose job it is to promote their city and their place and their culture of the place and to make it internationally known. I really think you need to, you know, and you also are in the business of, um, enabling artist mobility and EU has great funds, you know, that are out there for artist mobility. Um, I think you also do a great job at connecting cross-cultural, intercultural dialogue. I know this is really, I mean, as a matter of fact, right now I'm writing a, a proposal for a project that I have lobbied for the funding and it is really taking my brain cells are dying while that cannot be regenerated, are dying while I'm writing this project and budgeting and thinking about which indicator of, indicators of my progress can be measured. But at the same time, I'm doing that because it funds what I do. So yeah. you can't, you know, look away from it. You know what I mean? Like it will add value to it. And what's funny about it is when a tourist board of a city or the city or the, the region or a state or an embassy or whoever pays for something, then they look at it like it's more valuable than when they got it for free. <laughs> hmm. So I you want know? to ask two things. The first thing is how do you... How do you make sure that your that you can stay true to your ethical values when you take funding from commercial boards or government sources that will have their own agendas? Because all the stuff that we've seen, we've not we've not seen anything where it's stuff that's not been asked in return. It's like, oh yeah, you can use this space but then an artist has to donate their artwork, you know? And it's like, well, it's not our artwork. We can't really say that that's all right, you know? Uh, I mean, that's a really small example because, you know, we just take something off our wall and give it to them. <laughs> but, but like, there's, you know, there's always something, there's always a pull, there's always like, well, that's fine, but it has to be sponsored by, I don't know, Shell Oil or, mm, do you know what I mean? I'm not even talking about commercial sponsors for projects like this as much as I'm talking about funding that is really state or some governmental funding. Um, everybody in, in New York makes fun of me because they said you've become a government sponsored artist. You had to leave United States to become a government sponsored artist because my project is often funded by US embassies or wherever I go. Um, when there's, there's difference between commercial and non-commercial funding. So when you're talking about governmental funding, whether that's EU or embassies or cities or tourist boards or whatever, um, they expect certain things, which is, um, report writing and they expect um you know 
for you to be able to give him receipts of things. Yeah. The, the good answer for that is to hire a grant writer and hire somebody who will then do the budgeting and do the, the receipts and all that, finances, all of that. They get paid through percentage. You, you, I don't ever pay them in advance. They will get paid from percentage. And their job is to take what you do and put it in a format that these grants want to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> which I'm telling you, you're doing such an incredible job that is like, I mean, there's so many grants out there that your project is like made up for because I've seen the other th issue is there, I've seen so much money go to frivolous things and I've seen so much money, especially EU money, pay for most ridiculous things. That's so that true. It's a shame they're not paying for your festival. You know, <laughs> I think it's really a shame. When you talk about when you talk about commercial funding, when you talk about you know commercial companies, of course they want to see get something for their money, and yeah. and I understand that. So in that sense, you have to in advance. You have to know what you're willing to give and you have to put that in very distinct terms, you know? Yeah. And then you have to measure what, is it what you're getting and what you're giving? Is that, is that, uh, um, you know? Is it like way off? Yeah. Is, is, it, is it balanced? Because yeah. if it's not, then it's a problem, but it can be balanced. It can be balanced. I mean, I, you know, I told you the story where my sculptures are made in a factory because the owner bought three of my pieces before that and didn't ask how much they were. So when he asked for an invoice, I said, how about you shut down your factory? My sculptures are worth you shutting down your factory for three days and making sculptures for me. So he shut down the factory for three days and they made sculptures for me because I couldn't have made them myself. So that's how it works. I mean, yes, I could have, you know, built him and, and then taken that money and then he could have given me some crazy price for, sh I don't know how much shutting down a factory for three days costs. <laughs> 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 oh God, that, you know? But, um, you know, I also evaluate how much I'm getting for what, what I'm giving, you know? And I've never ever been involved in a situation, not in art residencies, not anywhere I went, where I had to give something I wasn't willing to give. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's, the, that's the thing, isn't it? I just want to shout out to Catalina. I don't know if you're in a place where you can turn on your microphone and talk to us, but um, I really appreciate your comment. If you don't have the chat up, Catalina's just put, I have loved everything you have done, which is really lovely to hear. So yeah, I'm here. Um, I yeah, I have to say, I I actually started my own little public art exhibit here in New Jersey, across the river from Manhattan, um, and uh, and it's a one woman show, and I do what I can. But art here is so so hard, and and I have to say, like everybody, you guys are, are all about like trying to see uh, what else you can do and engage as many people as possible the art world here is like, this is mine and I'm not gonna share. Like I post open calls and galleries don't share them. You know, arts organizations don't share them. And it's so frustrating. I mean, I've done what I've done with what I, what I have, but can you imagine how much more beautiful everything would be if, um, <laughs> if people cared? And we're planning on moving to Spain in a year. So um, I'm gonna be coming down to you guys and like hanging out and doing stuff with you. That sounds oh, amazing. Huh? Whereabouts are you moving to? Uh, we're in Madrid. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Okay, a short little flight. <laughs> that's not that's not bad at all. Yeah, it is. It's really frustrating when there are um, kind of blocks if you're trying to work with people. It's something that my younger brother runs a theatre company, and he's had um, a lot of issues where he's kind of trying to get the group lots of the local theater groups together working together to do something you know like like big or amazing or special or you know for charity or and um yeah it's he meets a lot of these kind of blocks where it's like actually no I'm not going to share that I'm not interested in that and I'm going to kind of bad mouth everything that you're doing so yeah I feel you that's 
difficult, really difficult, Catalina. Hi, Nicole. Hi, good Hi. evening. Hi, thanks Hi. for joining us. Where are you calling from? I'm in Faversham in Kent, in England. Faversham. Where are you calling from? It's like a game show. Hi. <laughs> 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 Thank you for joining us. <laughs> hey, so um, it's good to uh, be taking part. Yeah. We were just talking. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. You That's do a right. little recap. Um, yeah, <laughs> we were just talking about. Um, we were discussing how we can kind of progress the festivals further, because um, at the moment the festivals are run by just the two of us, and everything is done by just the two of us. Um, with zero budget and done in our free time. Um, and we want to try and keep it that way, but it's getting more successful every year. And so we're... I mean, we don't want to sound miserable, but happy that it's successful. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just this kind of... Uh, we were just talking about the kind of ethics of fundraising and how we, how perhaps we could do that in the future yeah one one of the the issues that we're kind of stuck in at the moment um when you were talking adina about the the different funding sources is um with us being british but in an eu country um <laughs> so we're eu residents but we're not eu citizens and so a lot of the funding pools that we'd looked at, because the plan was to set up studios, that was why we moved here, residential art studios, and that was going to be like the hub of the artist community that would then kind of be part of the festivals. It was all kind of part of it, you know, and um, we spent literally years, two years in conversations with people at the EU about how it was going to work, and what was going to happen, and then the Brexit vote came and it was like, oh, well, now we're going to have to hold off. And we're going to have to see, like, you know, what happens with the agreement, if anything happens. Da, da, da. And so we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And then now that the um, kind of no deal deal has been done, it's kind of like, yeah, we can't do anything for you now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're kind of in a little bit of a, a, a gap and we can't become Spanish for another seven years. So we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to come up with a plan before then. <laughs> But Can you get a local person to join your your committee and let them apply for the funding? Yeah, that'd be amazing. It'd be really amazing. Yeah. It would be great. If or even even if you the other local businesses in all the little villages, like you're bringing tourism into their vi villages. So can can they not sponsor you in some way as well? Do you know, all the restaurants and everything that do well out of tourism? Yeah. Um, if they if they just donated to the festival, it would help you. Yeah, it would for sure. But even mm -hmm. with international artists, I think if you approach the embassies where the artists are from, that's the job of the embassies to to, yeah. to you know cross cultural connection. And the, the easiest thing for them is to pay a plane ticket for somebody from whatever Malaysia to come to. To the country where they're stationed yeah and they say that that does that doesn't even go under their cultural grants project that just goes under their travel budget yeah so and and they will just they i mean that's the easiest thing for them to pay is for their artists from their country to come to to where you to where yeah. they're stationed yeah, the EU, like you said before, the EU Mobility Fund for, for the European artists, they can access that easily. And I know that there's stuff in um, Africa and I know there's stuff in America as well. It's kind of quite accessible for artists in terms of traveling. Um, yeah, it's more the, the running of the festival itself rather than the artists getting here. But also there's something about when you have a big project like you do is... Um, Taking breaking it down into segments and applying different segments for different brands. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, so a bunch of smaller, smaller grants really helps because then you're not dependent on single donor and and um, you know the responsibility. The the less they give, the less they expect. 
Yeah. True. Yeah. We were we were hoping um, after the first festival that we did um, in 2019, um, our neighbouring island, Fuerteventura, the, the local government there um, were really on board with it. Mm. And our one of our plans was kind of hopefully to expand the festival from because we started off as festival the Arte Lanzarote mm -hmm. um, and one of the things we were hoping was that we could expand the festival and have kind of a couple of weeks here and then move everything to a different island that couple of weeks there and move around because there's like eight eight islands in the Canary Islands so we, it, we thought it'd be a great idea to you know to move around and to to take the art to all the islands and all the communities and the, the Fuerteventura government were on board straight away mm. um, by getting then COVID struck so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole did you want to say something before it looked like you were gonna? No no I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just intrigued really about how how you go about all that because it's that sort of thing is kind of beyond me really I sort of admire people like you that set things up and get it happening it's uh yeah I wouldn't know where to start really we uh, didn't either when we started <laughs> <laughs> the first the first year that we that we did the festival um it was it was kind of a surprise it was kind of a surprise <laughs> if if you know the story forgive me but Basically, um, I have taken part in a similar kind of um, festival in France that's run by um, Professor Kenneth Pay. And he said when we moved to Lanzarote, maybe you should have an art festival because his festival was called La Rock Art Festival. And he was like, you could have Lanzarote Art Festival. It's the same, same acronym. And then we can like do a twin thing. It'll be great. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. And then, and then it was like, well, I've not seen your open call. Like, what's happening? Are you, oh, right, okay. like, that's happening now. Okay, great, <laughs> you know. So we were actually really lucky because we had a bit of a guide, you know. I don't, I think yeah. without that, it just wouldn't have happened. We'd have had no idea, you know, how to get going. Um, so, yeah, so it is largely thanks to him, I would say. Yeah. Largely, well, largely, largely, yeah. How have you found the festivals, Nicole? Um... Yeah, I've, I've sort of looked at little bits and pieces. I haven't, I haven't always had opportunity to sort of take part in everything, but I've, I've tried to keep an eye on it and uh, looked, looked at bits. And it was, it was nice to be involved in like the postcards and the collaboration and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it was good. Who was your own collaboration artist? Um, I wrote their names down in case they were around oh yeah because you won't know what they look and love stuff like that you won't have a clue about who it is um there was stephen aban jr okay. and, uh tio saucer yeah uh -huh. it was so uh, this year i was i was really impressed with the with the collaborate pieces there was some there was some some artists who were kind of really pushed and kind of you know the like a, a a music artist was given a like a sculpture for just yeah the way that the draw happened was really interesting yeah, wasn't it, it? Was, some of the works that came out of it you could tell that people had really had to kind of work through a process yeah, to get some step out of their environment and kind of push the boundaries. And there was there was some awesome. <laughs> Look, Catalina saying it was so hard. <laughs> Why was it hard, Catalina? <laughs> I think uh, I think you know I'm I'm about to enter my fifties. I've been doing art for thirty years. I think my viewpoint is so defined already. And, and one thing that's been cool about the pandemic, I think, is I've tried to hit different um, types of, uh, I've, I've actually done a couple pieces that are not photography. Um, but the piece I got, it was lovely. I loved it. But it, the aesthetic was so absolutely different from anything that I've ever done or, like, I'm a graphic person. This was very, like, 
Japanese inspired, maybe also with like some alien forms in there. Like I'm about lines and graphics. And so it was so, it, at one point, I think you guys emailed me like, are you sending this or not? And I'm like, shit. <laughs> I need to figure it out. And, the, and, and it, that was a trigger for me. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I can do it. I can do it. Like I, I went and I like went through my work and I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? And and, a, and and the moment it clicked, it all went through. But just that clicking point was really hard to get to. Um, but I love what came out of it. It's nothing that I would ever have created on my own. And so it, it was beautiful, but hard, hard. Do you think yeah, it was I'll... a worthwhile experience, even though it was really difficult? Absolutely worthwhile. I think, I think, I mean, that's, we can tend to get a little um, stuck as artists. I think, I do think that, that that's one thing that I learned from, from doing that project. You know, I'm, I'm a very confident photographer. So I shoot what I see and I, and, and, and the moment I see it, I know that I have the shot and like, it's rare that I'm like, Shh, I missed it. Right. Um, but it's, 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 that's my work. It's like my eye, what I catch, period. I don't ever have to then process it further. Um, and so this was a, a forcing of that process, which we should all do as artists. But I think, you know, I've been doing the same thing for 30 years, <laughs> you know, maybe you get a little bit better at it, but your aesthetic and your lines and your stuff, it just kind of follows you through that. So, um, yeah, it was cool. It was very cool. I'll put a link to it because I put it on my Instagram. Do you, do you know who you who you collaborated with? Unfortunately, we haven't got the we haven't got the spreadsheet. I was going to say that we were trying to get trying up on get your phone to, to see who it was. <laughs> and Nicole, you um, took part in that as well. How did you find that as an experience? Um, yeah, the receiving um, like a photograph because I'm a painter drawing and I, I, I did struggle for a while I was thinking what on earth am I going to do with this and um, I just had to go with like a gut feeling of, of the image that came to me because I was trying to I was maybe trying to overthink it yeah. um, and I just had to go with what the photo presented to me it's like what I felt from it so probably, possibly not my my best piece of work but it was it was a real struggle to for me to sort of come up with something really so it, they did push me good Thank you. <laughs> yeah. and it's interesting to get that from from somebody else you know whatever they've perceived of what they've they've made and then you've got to add to it somehow and you yeah. have no idea whether it's along the same lines or yeah so interesting yeah interesting exercise yeah i think i think it's interesting to see how especially with an unfinished piece, how others interpret what you're trying to create. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually curious how you guys um, dis like did about, because I, I did create an arts organization. I have about 200 artists that I'm working with right now um, worldwide, and I would love to do something like this. So how did you guys, did you look to have artists that, that whose aesthetics were completely different, or was it a randomizer, or what did you do? Just completely random. You just kind of assigned people based on, like, I made half a list, half a list, and popped you guys together? Yeah. Okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah it was literally it was that. literally like the first artist that submitted um no sorry the second artist that submitted that was with the got, last artist got the first artist's work oh was it okay. yeah and then it just like yeah. it just rolled down like that because uh, i think especially i thought we'd done it like no. split um yeah i just think Having, having the opportunity to sit there and look and go, okay, well, that piece would work, you know, that would push that artist really hard if we sent this piece. Um, it think, becomes too forced though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just doing it at random kind of just brings out better kind of results, I think. The, you know, the, we, did it, we did it last year and we had some awesome results last year as well. And we did, we did the same thing, just completely random. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, 
the results this year just blew me away. Mm. And so some of the results that came through were, for me, it, it kind of, it makes the whole festivals worthwhile. You know, seeing the results of, of an artist who's sent an email in and said, this work, this work really, really pushed my boundaries and I struggled, but here's the results. And you open up the results and you're just like, wow, that's awesome. You know, and, and again, with some of the other collaborating projects that we've done, um, where we've had artists from, from like all around the world collaborating together for the first time and creating pieces together, it's just... I have a bit of an ethical question um, yeah. because I do really love this piece. Um, can you submit that to something and then just give, you know, the Rank on Tours Revolution credit as well? Or do I have to reach out to them? If I wanted to submit it to something else, what would be the, the process there? I would reach out to them because it's like a co-created work. So yeah. that would be my feeling. And I guess they have the right to say, actually, no. no. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I think yeah. that probably the, the um, artists in the festival are very unlikely to, to say no. That's just my impression from people, yeah. you know. The people that we The, the people that we have met through these conversations, um, everybody seems very open and, yeah. And respectful of each other so i think that um i don't think that would happen but i would definitely ask okay yeah i also wanted to point out because we were talking about the participation things um and someone mentioned the postcards that Kay is one of the artists who um suggested the the postcard project um Kay and lucija i don't think lucija's coming tonight she came last night so again big thank you Kay. Yeah. It's been a really awesome part of the festival. It really has. I haven't That's seen that. Is, is that up somewhere? No, it, it's not up yet. It will be. Um, okay. So did you did you read about it? Do you, do you know what's happened with it? I know I submitted and you guys told me you received it. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we exhibited them in the gallery that we that we had here. Um, in the physical gallery, we exhibited all the postcards along with a map um, pinpointing where all the postcards had come from. Um, Just pause. You can see that on the YouTube. We did a little walk around of the gallery oh, yeah. so you can see it. Um, and we, we exhibited the postcards on like a traditional postcard Ferris wheel that you get in a, in a store. Cool. Um, and then we also left a big pile of blank postcards and some art materials in the gallery and encouraged people that visited to create their own. Um, and so what, we're, what we've done now that we've taken it down, we've scanned all the postcards in, the fronts and the backs of all the postcards. Um, <coughs> and we're going to compile them and put them together as a book, including oh. all the ones that were created in the Very gallery cool. itself. Um, and then next week, the people that have requested a postcard in return, they will be, again, randomized, and the postcards will be sent out along with a little note to tell you how far that postcard has traveled to get to us and then to get to you. That's very cool. Yeah. So later in the year, there'll be um, a launch for that book, so we're gonna publish it. Um, digitally, definitely, potentially in print if the, if we can dig out some funding for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we'll email everybody that was involved and, and let you know because it'll be displayed on the website a bit like the multi-page pieces were this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you get many people participating who attended the gallery? Did many people make postcards? Yeah, um, yeah, we've got um, two albums full, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think we put out about a hundred postcards, and maybe three quarters of them are in those albums. Um, yeah, there's quite a large amount, and there's quite a large amount of people who send postcards as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be a a chunky book. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> a 
again, like with all the with all the events that we've done and all the participation projects that we've done, everything has been suggested by artists. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's those it's those events that have made the festivals as successful as they are. It's like it's those events that are, are bringing people together and getting people to work together. Thanks. Good evening, Rosanne. I think Rosanne's she's, frozen. She's here. She's she's there. <laughs> you're here, but you're frozen. Maybe she's I'll come back to Rosanne. We'll come back to Rosanne. <laughs> so, okay. as well as um events, we also like the theme to come from the artist. So this year's. Um, theme came from the artists everything that was suggested we put on an Instagram post and then people voted they messaged us so it was like a secret vote and then um, the one that got the most votes is what is what we went with um, so any any ideas any thoughts on not necessarily a theme because that's kind of quite a lot to like on the spot come up with but just kind of what kind of a feeling might we like next year do you think I'm going to hand it to Adina. Reconnect. <laughs> Reconnect, yeah. Reconnect. <laughs> it's, it's definitely going to be something post-COVID, isn't it? Say that again, Nicole. It's definitely got to be something post-COVID yeah. and coming back to some sort of, some sort of normality. Yeah, we need to, because obviously like um, last year, the festivals were all planned out and all ready to go um, just before COVID struck. And we were like, what do we do? How, how do we, you know, how do we put this on? What do we, just what do we do? Um, and we came up with the, with the idea of the Lost Festivals. Mm. Um, and then obviously this year we've, we've had distance, so it'd be, it'd be good to step away. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday at the digital dinner, people were talking about um, sort of themes of positivity and hope and the future and, and this kind of a vibe. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Rosanna, are you here now? Uh, I think Rosanna... Oh. Your internet is is playing up for you. Maybe if you want to talk, you can put it in the chat and we can read it out for you. <laughs> Kay, what, do you have any thoughts about um, how, how the festivals would feel next year? Um, maybe freedom or something on the line of, do you know that we're able to travel and move again? Freedom. Yeah. Do you know, or as you say, something positive, um, do you know, because like we've all we've all been locked up so much, so it's it's kind of nice that we can get out again or openness or something like that. Yeah. Someone last night suggested breathe. Breathe, yes. <laughs> yeah, now we can breathe again. Yeah. Not yet, we're still wearing masks here. <laughs> 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 we have to in, we have to in shops um, and in enclosed spaces but and you have to have a mask with you at all times but other than that we're, we're kind of free aren't everyone we? has them like on their elbow or on their wrist or like tucked into yes. their back pocket because <laughs> you can get fined for not having one but the places where you have to use them now are really limited and I mean, here, particularly in summer, everything's outdoors. So the chances of you going indoors, it's like maybe once a week for your supermarket shop. That's it, you know? Yeah. Catalina, have you got any thoughts about um, the festivals next year? I, I mean, I just, I, I like the, the thoughts so far. I think that there's going to be a lot of that, where there's a lot of people trying to, to think of... Uh, stepping out and also I don't know I don't want to jinx it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, um, that's one thing that that we kind of well we thought about this year wasn't it was mm -hmm. 
you know, trying to come up with something that everybody else isn't doing. With the, the, the whole world kind of experiencing the same thing. Yeah, the, so I so the public art organization that I told you guys about, I just celebrated the anniversary. So I did a, a virtual show similar to the, using the same platform that you guys used. Okay. Um, I had three different rooms. So the first one was paper, because paper is the first year anniversary. Yeah. The second room was pride, because it was for pride month. Um, and then the third one was, it was coming out pride, and then the third one was coming out of the pandemic. Um, and I think uh, after we had decided that, that's when uh, the variants started coming out or how scary they were. And so I was just like, you know what? <laughs> don't talk about it anymore. Leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, just because we don't know, right? Like we're, we're back to using masks here. Uh, and, uh, you know, for our own safety, they, they tell us we don't have to, but, but, you know, we have two kids that are not vaccinated yet. So we have to be careful. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I just um, messaged everybody. I'm in a jury for an open call in Sarajevo for permanent outdoor sculptures. So if you know any artists who do public art, please forward them the call to. Um, unfortunately, there are only seven days left. But hmm? I'll definitely post it on walk by. Please do. Um, we've been I've been posting it and and advertising it for a while now, but. Um, it's a really cool opportunity, especially for people who don't have too much. There's not a large budget, but there's a budget. So um, it's really good for people who don't have, you know, too much experience in public art, but who want to uh, suggest something that's, and it's actually uh, dedicated to um, a basketball player from Bosnia who played for Real Madrid and is really famous in Spain, actually. So okay. if you guys know any, any sculptors in Spain, Please send them to. It will be really cool to have that connection. Yeah, we'll we'll share that for sure. Yeah, we will. Uh, but um, yeah, it's all about networking, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely it is. Um, but honestly, I really, I really think, and I'm looking forward to the time where we're going to be able to uh, work together and to be present at these festivals and to really connect because there's nothing like networking in person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. True. And that's. That's one of the things that we we really wanted to, after the first year, we really wanted to expand and get kind of some more outdoor exhibitions and kind of public performances and pop-up events. Um, and that was something we were really hoping for this year. Yeah. Um, there was going to be, last year, there was going to be an artist She's also participated this year, um, uh, Kimling Morris, and she was going to do like I'm talking about someone's artwork on their behalf, which is always a bad idea. Isn't it? <laughs> but the idea it was like a it was a pop up booth that was going to be in the capital city center, and you bought something that you had that that meant something to you, but that had been kind of lost or found in some way and you left it on display in this booth. And then she was going to make something with all of these things. And then everybody that had donated was going to get a piece somehow. I've probably explained it really, really badly. But <laughs> she'll probably, she'll watch this and she'll be like, it wasn't like that at all, Sarah. <laughs> but um, just the idea of having something kind of in the street that anyone can interact with. Um, and a lot of the artists last night said that that would be something that they would like to see in the festival in the future, like something that's not kind of just limited to galleries and spaces that are perhaps feeling, um, you know, not welcoming for everybody, which yeah. we totally get. And yeah. board with. That's one of the things that's, I keep on saying that's one of the things, um, but that is oh, yeah. something that we really want to, we really want to bring to the island is to engage with the, with the public yeah. and not, specifically in a in a gallery space yeah yeah um Rizan's just sent a message in the chat she's just saying that she's from Armenia and her connection's really bad um she's in Salzburg at the minute but she's hardly managing to join us I'm sorry your internet's so bad it's so frustrating when that happens isn't it um 
Um, it's the second time that she's participated, unfortunately, online, but hopefully offline next year. Yes, Roseanne, get the flights booked. It's going <laughs> to happen. It's going to happen. We're just going to have hundreds of artists descending on Lanzarote. Everyone's about, there's no hotel beds. There's no hotel beds. <laughs> That's the dream. All right? the tourist boards. <laughs> yeah. I can tell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, is there anything that anybody would like, just kind of throwing it out there, if anyone has anything they want to add before we kind of um, wrap up? I don't want to feel anyone to feel like they've been cut short. I just want to say thank you guys because it, it was really nice. And, it, and, and for me, as somebody who's starting um, to do something similar, the the amount of possibilities were were astounding and i definitely want to follow in in some footsteps so um kudos kudos to the two of you really and i hope you guys made your 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 what you guys asked for so little funding wise i hope that you made at least that much if not a lot more no you guys didn't make the limit no not yet that really sucks <laughs> I mean, the other American talking, it's like, you need to make your money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not American. I live here. But, but, but it's, yeah, I mean, the, th the thing is here, like, you don't function if you don't have the funds, right? Yeah. Like, you, you have to take, everything has to be out of pocket. There's no help from anybody. So, um, I, if I were you, and this is what I did to, for, for a specific fundraiser that I did, is you know reach out to all the artists. We I don't charge submission fees just like you guys don't. Um, and you know five euros, five dollars goes a really long way, especially with all the artists that submitted. So at the very minimum, just you know throw something back. I'd send an email. I did. I did my part though. I put some money in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, it's difficult. Like again, we don't. I don't like pressure like from any angle particularly around finances and so yeah there's this kind of um a bit of a balancing act between going please if you can please do you know but don't don't feel like you have to like don't let it put you off like still be involved you know so yeah maybe we need to maybe i need to be you know because it's it's something that you know we want to be we, we really want to be an inclusive event um, and if we don't want to put a restriction on it yeah. so that you know if an artist can't afford two euros or three euros or five euros to participate then you know I know it's hard though it's, it, it's, is hard. it is hard in, in, an, in the closing email which will go out early next week there will be the a demand <laughs> no there will be like a, you know if you've enjoyed the festivals and you feel like you're able then please donate here yeah, yeah i think you should for yeah. sure yeah and thank you for your um, comments and also like you should you should hit us up on the email and we could like maybe do more work together I would love to. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I knew you guys were busy. I had thought of doing that. So, like, once this was over, then I would definitely reach out to you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll, um, in the email that we send out in the next few, hopefully in the next few days, um, we will be kind of asking for some feedback. Um, and if you've got, if you've got kind of, you know, groups that you work with or, or events that you host or anything like that, then definitely kind of send us the information and let's build the network bigger. Let's see what we can do together. Together's always better. Yes. That's what Absolutely. I said on my billboard. I made, I took part in like a lead, Leeds is gonna be the European capital of culture in 2023. And I went to this, um, meeting seminar it's a city, a city in, in the, the UK. UK sorry and I went <laughs> to um, an online meeting um for artists and creative facilitators who might be interested and they did this um like advocation like what would you advocate for write it on a billboard and together is better is what I put on my billboard so I'm always up for working with people so yeah anyone is welcome to get in touch yeah. and um, something I something I sort of 
took part in recently so not, not so much art but um kind of meditation and stuff and the the, the guy that ran it is like um on your own you go you go faster on your own but you go further together yeah oh i like yeah, that i like that but i'm can you write that down? yeah i'm writing that down. faster <laughs> on your own but further together yes apparently yeah. it's um they're not the exact words and it's uh, a, an african philosophy apparently Oh, that's really interesting and actually kind of slowing down is a bit of a theme at the minute um in my creative facilitation work i don't know if it's across the board but definitely the museums and galleries that i am working with have been interested in how um life has changed during the pandemic and as we're kind of coming maybe through the other side of it um and a lot of new artworks have been made around this kind of slowing down and doing things together, like being more connected, but kind of doing things a little bit slower. That's really, I really like that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Nicole. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else want to add anything? Are we all good? No, just a big thank you to both of yes. you. Uh, thanks, yeah, thanks Mary. for all your hard work. Thank everyone yeah. here for their hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it's Thank everyone. This yeah. is why there's a festival because we're all here together. Yeah. Thank you all for taking part and being being as active as you could be. Mm -hmm. You know, viewing a video, viewing a gallery, popping into an event. Yeah. There Just... was a message from Matt before about that. We didn't read it out to everyone. I don't know if everyone can see the chat. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Sorry I have to go dinner time. I will drop you an email. It's been an amazing festival and spent last night watching videos and going through galleries after last night's Zoom event. It was a great way to spend the evening. Cheers, Matt. Mm. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yes, and thank you all for giving your time and energy and thoughts tonight. We really appreciate it. Yeah, um, giving us a lot to think about. Yeah, you have. We have lots of notes. <laughs> lots of notes. <laughs> lots of notes. But it's been nice. It's been nice to kind of to take a bit of a step back and just kind of take a breath mm. and just reflect on you know how how it's gone, how the events have gone, the different things that have happened throughout the the month. Yeah. I can't even. I can't believe it's been a month. I know. <laughs> it's gone so fast. And your input's been so valuable this evening. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and do all stay safe. I feel like I need to start saying that again, just in case. Um, and it's not goodbye, it's just farewell for the minute. You'll be hearing emails from us very soon, you know, details of the catalogue and all that kind of stuff and about the book launch. And yeah, you'll be bored of us in a few months. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.